Okay, let's begin exercise number three now. In exercise number three, we're going to learn how to modify the corridor. More specifically, we're going to take a look at how we can modify the, the base pavement thickness here and also how we can modify and vary the, the shoulder widths. So first we're going to focus on modifying the base pavement thickness. How can we change this? Right now this is set for 6 inches or 0.5 feet by default. We want to change that to be 1 foot. So we can easily do that without having to redrop a template and recreate a whole corridor by using the Create Parametric Constraint tool. So to get to the Create Parametric Constraint tool, we're going to go up to Corridors, Edits, and we're going to go to Create Parametric Constraint. Notice the Tool Settings dialog will appear, and it's going to be prompting us to locate a corridor. So I'm going to come over here and select my corridor, and notice it's going to ask me for a starting station. I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard to lock in the starting station and press Alt on my keyboard to lock in my ending station. And I'm going to left click to accept. And that brings me over to the constraint label option. So what we want to be able to do is we want to find our pavement to depth constraint label. And right now the default value for that particular constraint label is 6 inches or 0.5 feet. So we want to change that to negative 1. So we're going to make that negative one or one foot and then we're going to left click to accept. Now you can see the start value is negative one so I'm going to left click to accept and the stop value is negative one I'm going to left click to accept and then what happens is it goes through and it looks at the corridor it finds where the pavement to depth label is associated to the points on the template and it automatically adjusts the template to the new value that we specified for the constraint label which was one foot. So now all along our corridor if we zoom into the 3D view the base pavement depth should be adjusted to one foot. One other thing to point out on the cross section is the little green boxes along the bottom of the cross section. The green boxes indicate the locations where the pavement base depth was adjusted. Okay, now that we've created our parametric constraints and created our new values for our base pavement layer, I want to show you how you can review to make sure that you entered the values correctly. So I'm going to go up to a new tool that's called Corridor Objects. It's going to ask you to locate your corridor. I'm going to select the corridor and another window will appear. And the Corridor Objects dialog box will show up and this lets you review modifications that you've made to the corridor. So I'm going to go over to my parametric constraints category and click on that and notice that it shows the parametric constraint label, it shows the new values that we entered as well as the starting and stop stations. If we need to make more modifications we can do that here in this window by simply clicking in one of the fields here and keying in new values. Okay, close the corridor objects dialog Next we want to take a look at how we can adjust our shoulder width and vary our shoulder widths on our, on our cross section and inside of our model here. And we're going to do that by using the Create Point Control tool. And the Create Point Control tool allows you to follow other information than what is set in the template. So by default right now all of my shoulders are set at 8 feet. Now I want to vary those shoulders so they go from 4 feet and they taper out to 8 feet, say over a 100 foot range. So I want to look at the plan view here. I have some plan graphics already drawn representing my left edge of shoulder taper and my right edge of shoulder taper. These are already drawn in my geometry file that we attached previously. So now what I want to do is use this create point control tool to make our cross section template and our model follow these new edge of shoulder lines that I have placed in my geometry file. So I'm going to go up to corridors and locate the create point control tool and it's going to be, to be prompting me to locate my corridor so I'm going to select my corridor object. 
I'll lock in the start station. So I'm just going to press the Alt key on my keyboard to lock in the start station. And then I just want this to taper over to 51 plus 00. zero. So I'm just going to key in 51 plus 00, zero for my ending station and press enter on my keyboard to lock that in. And for the description, I'm going to key in right EOS control. And then from here, I'm going to left click to accept. And then now we want to locate the point that we're going to be controlling. Now, this is important because we need to know which point are we actually going to be controlling. And what we can do is we can either select a plan view graphic here from the corridor representing our edge of shoulder on the right side. Or we can pick it from the cross-sectional view over here by hovering our cursor over that EOS right point in the cross-sectional view. I'm just going to select it from the plan view. And I'm going to left click to accept. And it's going to be asking me for the mode. We're just going to keep it set for horizontal mode because we're just moving it horizontally. So I'm going to left click to accept that. The control type is going to be linear geometry. And that's because I already have some geometry drawn out here already. So we're going to keep that set for linear geometry. I'm going to left click to accept that. And then it says locate the plan or profile element. So this is the element we want it to follow now. So we want that edge of shoulder right, which is represented by this line here in the file, in our plan view. We want it now to move and follow this, this new geometry that we've created for our right edge of shoulder in our geometry file. So I'm going to select that, use a secondary alignment. I'm going to set this to yes, and we're going to left click to accept priority number one, left click to accept, start offset, we're going to leave that set for zero, left click to accept, stop offset, we'll leave that set to zero, left click to accept. And now you'll see the model updates. There's also a magenta square that appears on the cross section indicating the point that's being point controlled as well. Also notice in the 3D view that the shoulder was tapered inwards following our graphic alignment in our plan view. So now let's do the same thing for the left hand side or the left shoulder on this side of the corridor. So I'm again I'm going to come in and I'm going to locate my corridor by selecting a corridor object boundary. We're going to lock in the start station. Press Alt on the keyboard to lock in the start station. And for the ending station again, I'm just going to key in 51 plus 00. zero. Press Enter on the keyboard to lock that in. And then for the description, we'll just change that to be left EOS control. And we'll left click to accept that. And then the point we want to control is going to be this left edge of shoulder, or we can also select it from the cross-sectional view as well. So we're going to left click to accept the horizontal mode, and left click to set the linear geometry type. And now we want to locate our plan view graphic that we want the template and corridor to follow. So we're going to select the plan view element here. It represents our left edge of shoulder line. Secondary alignment, we'll leave that set for yes, and we'll left click. And priority will be one, we'll left click to accept. We'll leave the horizontal offset for zero. For the starting and stopping, left click to accept. And then now the left edge of shoulder line is now tapered and follows our graphic element that we had drawn in our geometry file. And notice once again, we have a purple or magenta square indicating that the left edge of shoulder point is now being controlled by with a point control. So let's review that we've created the point controls correctly. Upon first inspection, it appears that they have been created correctly. But if we need to modify them or we want to review them, we can easily use the corridor objects tool to review the point controls and make modifications if necessary. So I'm going to go back up to the corridor objects tool and select our corridor. And we go over to the point control category. And you can see the two point controls that we've created. It gives us all the information about the point controls. You can expand the dialog here a little bit. Over here we have the left edge of shoulder point control 
shows us all the uh, properties of that point control. And then over here, we have the right edge of shoulder point control and all the properties for that. So if we need to make any kind of adjustments, we can uh, go into any of the fields in here and change them. If we need to add another point control, we can also go up to the Add New Point Control button as well. And we can also delete point controls from this dialog. And once you're done reviewing, you can just close the Corridor Objects dialog. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.